Oh, check it out. I'm going to start a new electronics project. Look at this mess out here from so many projects that go on in parallel and at once. So uh, I want to make myself my own little timer controller in the hallway uh, for my hot water heater. I'm going to put it next to my regular thermostat. So I'm going to use one of my LCD displays here in 4-bit parallel mode. I'm going to Dremel this out and put one of them in here. I mean, this is a typical low-buck project. Got a couple new things from Radio Shack. I usually order from DigiKey, but if I'm in a hurry, I'll just go to Radio Shack. So, circuit board, read relay, 5-volt uh, voltage regulator. I always need those. NPN transistors, I just go through those. And, of course, I already got my tons of parts, you know. Hundreds of resistors, of course. Usually have a bunch of NPNs and transistors in there. Variety of stuff. You know, my microprocessors, which I'm going to be using one of those. Just tons of stuff. Molex connectors, LEDs. Capacitors, you know, the usual stuff. IC sockets, diodes. Zenit diodes. So, just getting ready to put make this on here. And I actually have a couple of these, but I was just buying more of those in there. Um, but I just realized I had this from a project I was using for something else. Just gonna the, the same IC microprocessor is already on there with my 5 volt voltage regulator, uh, filter caps, and just a couple basic parts. So I'm just gonna build this up. Even has my in circuit. Even already has my in circuit uh, serial programming cable that goes over to my programming. It's already soldered on there. So I'm ready to go with this. Just gotta uh, solder on the LCD terminals and then uh, start building up on there shouldn't take a whole lot and all I'm gonna do is basically uh, switch 24 volts through a read relay read relay will be powered off of the 5 volts here um, <clears throat> to switch power to, which is then gonna go through the thermostat cable I should have enough cables actually left in there gonna go over and down to the water heater and in my timer box I'm gonna put in a contactor and switch the water heater with that Never mind the stuff that's up here in boxes, but there's my water heater controller so far. But it's just got the regular 24-hour timer. And, uh, oh, it just now switched. <laughs> At 7 o'clock, it goes on. That's what time it is now. So it just happened to switch right when I'm here. That's awesome. So green light means it's now going to start heating. Usually it'll start here in the water heater, make that normal hiss sound when the, as the elements get warm. And uh, there it goes. Anyway, bad thing about this is, okay, I'm on APS, you know, for power, and they have this thing where uh, peak time is 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. on my plan. So if I use electricity during that time frame, it's 24 cents a kilowatt hour. And then, of course, they get you also for transmission fees also. So it's not straight up just 24 cents a kilowatt hour. It's that plus all the other fees. And then between 7 p.m. and 12 p.m. the next day, it's only 6 cents a kilowatt hour plus another bullcrap fees. Um, the deal is, you know, this doesn't know the difference between a weekend or a holiday or anything like that. So, it doesn't heat up any water between 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. Sometimes I have to come out here and flip some of those on a Saturday or something. If I needed water before 7 p.m. So, I'm going to make my own controller that's, you know, got the actual uh, days of the week. It'll be a seven-day timer. And then I'll have a little override button, too. That way, if you push a button during that peak time, I can, like, say, it'll I'll just probably have it kick on the hot water heater for 30 minutes and then go back to off, just for an override feature. So, so that's my project right now. And actually, eventually, this is also getting ready for the next project coming up, which is going to be uh, going to be making a heat pump water heater, basically uh, using refrigeration to heat the water. And uh, so I'll use an air handler. Once that project actually comes up, I have an air handler right here that's just slightly used from a model home. Piece of junk Goodman. Better work. Cheap. Remember, low buck. This is free. So, this air handler I gotta install in here, and then I gotta get, just get a, uh, about a two ton compressor. And uh, I already have the heat exchanger. The, where's that? There it is. That's a refrigerant to water heat exchanger. So the hot gas from the compressor will put the heat into the water, which will loop through there with a small water pump, a circulating pump. And that will heat my water and cool off my garage at the same time, which will be nice in the summer. Uh, 
two tons, as I'm, I'm thinking, should be enough. I have a three and a half ton compressor, and we did it for test, and we were heating up about 20 gallons of water, and it heated it up fairly, fairly quick, too quick. You know, I want that unit to run a little longer. Just, you know, for when I'm working out in the garage, I kick that sucker on. I want it to blow the vent on me. I don't, you know, want it to only run for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I want it to run a while. So, so I'm looking for about a two-ton compressor. So I always like to find, hopefully, a two-ton some sort of some sort of job or something for free. But if I have to, I'll probably eventually just go buy a compressor or buy a scratch and dent. So onto this project. For this, I'm going to start soldering it together and getting some stuff going. i got to find, I think I have another liquid crystal display already sitting here somewhere in this mess i got to find. And I know I have another one over here. That's still like brand new with a wrapper on it. But I have it already soldered to something for testing and it's got a little mold. Plug. So I don't want to use that one. I've got another one somewhere. i got to find it. 